My full name is Atsalam Yawa Kennedy. I'm a private tutor for secondary mathematics and I do handle both junior and senior secondary mathematics. Uh, this time around, I want to document how to handle uh, inequalities, which leads to linear programming. Inequalities is all about uh, equations. And uh, mostly when an equation is replaced by one of the inequalities, then it becomes an inequality. And again, this topic is involving, it requires one to have a clear understanding on the Cartesian plane, in short, the graphs. And again, uh, the same inequalities, you need to know that an examiner will instruct you to shade uh, one region. It can be the wanted region or the one, the, it can be the wanted region or wanted uh, region. So within a very short period of time, I'm going to handle uh, the case in Zambia, syllabus D mathematics. Uh, this topic is examined in both the paper one and the paper two. In paper one, there are, in paper one, there are sketchy graphs, whereby the lines, the graph will be drawn for you, then you'll be asked to identify uh, those lines and you come up with the inequalities, but with the, a paper two, uh, you need to be given a problem in a statement form, in short, the conditions. Then from the conditions, you are going to come up with uh, the inequalities. And uh, after coming up with the inequalities, then those inequalities will be plotted on the uh, graph. In paper 2, it is 12 marks, and in paper 1, it is 5 marks. Paper 1, the questions can be... Uh, like three inequalities or like four inequalities. Whether four inequalities or three inequalities, the number of marks is going to be five marks. But in paper two, uh, it's a question whereby you are going to be given two, two quantities, of which those two quantities from the statements are going to come up with uh, the inequalities. One is going to be represented by X, the other one is going to be represented by by a y. So without wasting time, let me highlight by first of all looking at the Cartesian plane in the first place. So what it is I'm saying, I start by looking, starting with the Cartesian plane in the first place because the Cartesian plane is part of what we are going to be uh, doing. But uh, I see it to be fit uh, to start first of all to explain what the inequalities uh, mean. So, inequalities. Uh, inequalities. Inequalities simply mean replacing the equal sign by. In short, let me put in summary. Uh, replacing uh, this equal sign by. This is less than. This is greater than, this is less than or equal to, and this is greater than or equal to. Uh, these signs which you have seen are the ones which are said to be the inequalities. You find that where the equal sign is going to be used in an equation, this equal sign is going to be placed by one of the inequalities. How do we call the inequalities? This one is called less than. This one is called greater than. Like this one and that one is called greater or equal, equal to. Not greater or equal to. It's less or equal to. Not greater or equal to. Less. Less than. Less than or equal to. And this one is greater, greater than, or equal to. Greater than or equal to. I'm sure that is uh, understood. And you need to understand that for the statements to be true, for the statements to be true, uh, what it is, if this is big, a bigger number, this is a smaller number, B 
big and small team do that. It always opens where there is a big and And at times you may find that small is going to be here, smaller number, then a box there, then here we have a bigger number. It means a small and a big. So that way this is going to be, this is less than. And this is better than and that way. This statement is going to be to be true. You need to understand to understand that. For instance, if I have a three, a box there, then I have a five. So this one is going to be like that. It is a three is less than three is less than five. But if I change, I write a five. This then a box there. And then if you, I'm going to say five is greater. Five is greater than the five is greater than three. So meaning that it open it opens like that. So it is very important to for the learner outside there to understand uh, these uh, signs. These signs are the ones which are said the inequalities and these inequalities at some point in this topic which I'm teaching are going to replace what the, the eco sign and once the eco sign is replaced then it means we are doing uh, the inequalities and when it comes to the graph uh, you replace the eco sign by the inequalities then shading is going to be moved in depending on how the examiner instructs if the examiner instructs to shade the wanted region, you are going to shade the wanted region. But if he instructs to shade the unwanted region, you are going to shade the unwanted region. I'm going to explain it, to explain that. Then uh, apart from that, the next thing which we need to look at is what the Cartesian plane. Cartesian plane, this is plane by this is y axis and this is the x axis. So the way it is, the, the x-axis is y is equal to 0. x-axis is the line which is y is equal to 0. And y-axis is the line which is with an equation x is equal to what? 0. So you should do observe that proposal. Because of that, at this point, we have what we call as the origin, where the x-axis and y-axis meet. This is what the origin. And this is given by the coordinate 0 comma, 0 comma 0 because x is 0 and y is what? 0. And on the Cartesian plane, we only have one point which can be named uh, the origin. And the, the coordinates of the origin can be 0 comma 0. Most learners out there, uh, you look at mathematics to be a difficult subject. Mathematics is not difficult but simple and the straightforward one that if you can be able to understand uh, the concepts and some disciplines then you prove that mathematics is not going to be uh, difficult and not, not at all so that waste time so this is the Cartesian uh, plane so for this Cartesian plane I'm going to draw another one there indicating the y-axis and the x-axis if I just draw the two lines meeting like that, then there is no graph there. So x and what y axis. This is x axis and y axis. I'm sure uh, that can be that can be seen. I need to be fair to draw to draw the diagrams where the viewers out there can be able uh, to see mathematics. Is not difficult. So I've cleared some space. Let me move somewhere there. We are looking at the inequalities, you know. Let's look at this. I draw another. This is this is zero where they meet, but this is y-axis and this is x-axis. So now this time around, I said uh, in the first place, I said the x-axis means y is equal to zero. This is an equation for the x-axis, and the equation for the y-axis is x is equal to, to zero. I'm sure that is uh, that is understood. This is what I have explained there. Now this time around, I am going to draw a line passing there, another line passing there. The lines are parallel to the y-axis, 
So these lines which are uh, wired is are going to get a picture of that x equals to zero, x equals to c. That is c means the number where this straight line, which is parallel to the y-axis, is touching the x-axis. So this one, which is the y-axis, is seen to be touching the x-axis at zero. That's why it is x is equals to, to zero. But this one, if I say this is a three, if I say this is three and this is negative one. So this one is going to be x is close to 3 because it is parallel to the y axis but passing at 3 and this one is x is close to negative 1. I'm sure you are able to see how to get the equations and at some point when we start doing the inequalities and the equal sign which we have seen is going to be replaced by one of uh, the inequalities and I have said the inequalities are this one, which is less than this one, greater than that one, which is less or less than or equal to, and this one, which is greater than or equal to. This can be used to replace an equal sign. Look, as I'm using the equal sign, uh, there is nothing like, uh, like there is nothing like checking the what wanted or unwanted uh, unwanted region. I'm sure that is. Uh, so from there, what I need to do is, let me draw another one. This time around, this is x-axis again, this is, uh, this is x-axis and this is y-axis. Uh, y-axis and this is what the x-axis. So if you look at that, let's have the lines now drawn parallel to, to the x-axis. Of course, these lines are going to be touched the uh, y-axis at some number like this one. I have already elaborated to say this one is x-axis, which is y is equal to zero. Y is equal to zero because it is touching at zero. So if I say this is a six and this is a negative two, so this one is going to be y is equal to this one. Y is equal to six. Y is equal to zero. And this one is going to be y is equal to negative 2. Like that. So look at that. These are lines parallel to the y axis. So these are lines going parallel to the x axis. So the nature of the equation for those lines that are going to be parallel to the, to the y axis can be x equals c, where c simply means a constant number. It's a constant. And this constant simply means the number where. This line is touching, is touching the what? The x-axis. So like in this case, x equals, in place of c, we are going to write the 3. So x is equals to, to 3. I'm sure that is understood. But if you look at this diagram, the pattern is x is, not instead of x equals to c, y equals c. So now that y equals to c, that c is a constant number, is a constant meaning that this is the number where the line which is parallel to the x-axis is touching the y-axis. So this one, y equals c. Instead of c, we are going to say y is equals to 6. And this one is going to be y equals negative, negative 2. I'm sure uh, one out there can be able to understand that for you who are present here, I'm sure you are able to follow my steps. Most people I uh, say mathematics is uh, difficult. It is not all that uh, uh, difficult if you can uh, be able to grasp the concept and to follow some disciplines which are there. So without wasting time, let's make the combination of the lines. Those which are parallel to the x-axis and those parallel to the y-axis drawn on the same graph. I maintain that this is x-axis and this is y-axis. And when you are doing graphs, either sketch graphs or any type of a graph, you need to, to show the x and the y-axis by not showing x and y. These are just going to be the bare lines crossing, uh, meeting at uh, that point. There is no graph there, but if you show that this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis, then this is 
going to become a Cartesian plane or X or Y plane, and the graph starts like a plane, right? And where the two meet, X axis and Y axis is said to be the origin. From the beginning, I said this is Y is equal to zero, and this is X is equal to what? X is equal to zero. Now, I said, let me make you what the combinations. Combinations, let me maintain the lines that are used. For X there, uh, X is passing at negative one, and it is parallel to the Y axis. And there is another line there, passing at post positive three. This is positive three. Then let's have some more lines, one line like that, and the other one like that. We can have many more. But in my example, I've chosen to use just a, just a few. From there, what are you going to do? Let's, uh, let's, let's name the equation of that line. Uh, this is not the other than x equals, the c is what? The c is what? Negative 1. And this one is going to be x equals, the c is what? 3. Let's look at that. I maintain, look at. If I said this is 6, if this is 6, let me maintain that this is also 6. This is a negative 2 like that in those lines. So now, let's look at this line. The line there, this is y is equal to the intercept 6. And this is y is equal to x axis, y is equal to 0. I've already indicated it. And this is y is equal to negative 2. Because this line is parallel to the x axis and it is intercepting the y axis at negative, or negative 2. I'm sure you, are, you know how to get. Uh, those equations of the lines that can be drawn either parallel to the x-axis or to the y-axis. I'm sure that is uh, that can be seen and can be followed. You know, the way I'm explaining how to go about, I'm smart in the, in the sense that um, I know that I'm teaching via a video. A learner out there is going to have is not going to have access to ask me uh, questions. So there we go. From there, uh, I said, where, where are the x-axis and y-axis meet? This is the origin. So, uh, when you look at the origin, the coordinates of the origin is what? Uh, 0, 0. Meaning that we are writing such a way that this is x followed by what? y, x followed by y. But is it going to be the same at this point? And again, I pointed out that on the graph, we only have one point which can be termed as what is 0, 0, and this is uh, the origin where the x and y axis meet. So now let's consider this point. I'm going to call that point as, I'm going to call this point as A. I call this as B and I call that as AC. Then let me call this as what K and I call this as what M this point M, and then this one, let me call it N, and this one I call it as what P. So from there, examiners are going to question you to say, state, state the coordinates of, state the coordinates of A, 1, 2, B, 3, Uh, see. And then let me also look at the four K. We have a K there, then followed by five M and six. It is set the coordinate of uh, N seven. I also include the coordinates of what? Coordinate of T. You know, uh, learning inequalities, it can be very, very important to understand how to deal with the, uh, the coordinates. Number three there, can't be seen. I say number one is A, number two is B, and number three, uh, that is, I'm sure that is A, that can be, that can be seen. So if you look at that, how do we state the coordinates? Remember, uh, when we're coming up with the coordinates, any coordinates, 
Any point is known by the coordinates, and this is given by x comma x comma one. So that is how we state what uh, the coordinates. Like in case of a, in case of a, how are we going to state the coordinates of a? Solution. How are we going to state the coordinates of a? Solution number one is A, number two is B, number three uh, C. So these three have one thing in common, A, B, and C. Uh, the Y there is, A man, B is what? Six. But when you look at X for A, it is negative one. X for B, it is zero. X for C, it is what? A three. So to state the coordinates, a. Let's start with x. What is the x coordinate for a? X coordinate for a? Yes, this is negative one. And then comma six. Comma six y coordinate. Then for b? Zero. Zero. The x coordinate is zero. Comma what? Six. Six. And for c? Three. It is a three. Let me see. Yes, this is x is three. And six. And six. So if you observe very carefully, these three have one thing in what in common. And what is common? X is always what? Six. 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 And this is what? Uh, so the Y is always six, not X. Y is six. Look at this. X comma what? Y. It is Y, which is six, but the X is uh, are different. It can be the same. If you look at A, K and M. So let's look at A. K and M. I haven't shown the answer in this. I'll find the coordinates for these other vectors. But I want you to to capture uh, the trick which is behind to uh, behind identifying what the coordinates. So let's look at A. A X is negative one, comma, comma six. Then k, it is negative one again, comma, comma zero, because y is along the x-axis, which is zero. Then m, it is negative one, comma, negative one, comma, negative two. I'm sure one is able to see that. Look at this, this is x and this is what? Y. Looking at a, K and M have one thing in common. The X is always what? Negative one. So look at this. X is always negative. Negative one. But what is changing are the Y uh, coordinates. And to be fair, uh, we are remaining with two more. We are remaining with two more coordinates to be named. So we have named A, B, C, A, K and M. So two more. N and what? So how are, how are we going to identify that? How are we going to come up with the coordinate n? Boy, what can be the coordinate of n there? Um, negative. No? Uh, uh, start with x. The x is what? Z. Yes, x is cos to z. So x is 0, comma. Yes, y is negative. So this is x and y. That is uh, n. And n is number, number, number 4. Uh, number 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 six. Then let's look at the, let's look at number number seven. This is what you tell me the coordinates of three. Three. Three for x is very good. Comma. Negative two. Negative two. Very good. That is how to identify uh, the coordinates. I'm sure that is uh, understood in this part of uh, uh, the lesson taking 24 minutes. Yeah, I'm going to take it as in part one, explaining uh, where I have explained uh, the Cartesian plane and how to arrive at uh, the coordinates. In part two, that is where we are going to look at uh, inequalities. Uh, inequalities in the sense that we are going to be replacing this, where you see an equal sign, we replace it maybe by this or equal to or greater or equal to, and that way I'm going to explain 
uh, the region to be shaped. If the examiner is going to be say to say, say the wanted region, I shape the unwanted region, or say the unwanted region like that. So 